Well, to start off, um, I'm going to remove uh, the, the serial connection between the um, Deans connectors. Um, I can save this uh, Deans cable for use on another RC. Um, so I'm simply uh, taking the heat shrink off to uh, get better access to the uh, leads themselves. That way I don't have to block the connectors off. The first thing to do is to tin the uh, tips of the wires. Uh, always hold the soldering iron, the tip to the wire. So you heat up the wire, um, and then you essentially um, touch your solder onto the wire, which is heated up. Um, and here, you know, you I'm heating up the uh, socket, and then essentially placing the wire inside. Um, the EC5 connectors are fantastic. Um, I got mine from Hobby King. Um, these connectors work simply by um, pushing the pin um, into the housing. Um, there are other EC5 connectors, and they clip differently. Um, but I would suggest going with the Hobby King EC5 connectors. So here you can see I'm just finishing off the uh, negative lead on the uh, ESC. Um, the ESC already has 10 gauge wire, AWG, um, so it's perfect for to to go with the EC5 connector. Um, the EC5 connector supports um, 120 amps continuous, um, and that's that's really fantastic. You can see the uh, positive negative uh, terminals marked in the EC5 case. Um, and uh, I've got a castle system, so I'm just um, changing the 4 millimeter banana plugs on the Xeron ESC to a 6.5 millimeter um, castle bullet socket. Um, so this is so that I can connect my um, castle motor um, directly. Uh, to the ESD. You can also shorten your um, leads on the Castle 1515, which is the uh, 2200 kV motor. Um, I've done that for the same motor on my Kyosho buggy, uh, but for this uh, application, it's on my DAT uh, conversion. I'm just keeping the standard length. So, um, yeah, I do not have. Uh, a blower or a heater. Um, so I'm just going old school with a candle. Um, just make sure you heat up the air and you don't touch the heat shrink uh, directly with the flame. Um, you can see how it has come out quite well. We've got the EC5 connector and the 6.5 millimeter socket. And I'm just showing how the uh, the male end is on the ESC and I'm just mating it with a female housing. Um, the female socket should always go on the battery side. So let's make a serial harness. Why a serial harness? Well, I'm running um, 6S uh, with two 3S LiPos. So I'm going to just create a harness that lets me uh, connect the two 3S LiPos in, in series. Um, so you just take an X-Acto knife. Um, Take off about two to three millimeters of the end of uh, positive and negative leads. Um, I'm again using 10 gauge wire here, um, and you will see how well with the, with the sharp exacto knife. It's really easy to uh, trim the end. Um, if you have a wire stripper that supports 10 gauge, go for it. Um, and again, just apply the heat to your wire, make sure the wire is hot, and then you can very easily just melt your solder into the wire. You do not apply solder on the wire, you melt it on the heated wire itself. Um, and it's, it's, it's good to um, tin it from as many sides as you can. Um, make sure you do not cool down the solder by using cold water or anything, let it cool down on its own. Um, and again here I'm just filling in um, the pin with solder. 
Um, don't fill it too much because when you need to keep it hot and then poke the wire in essentially. So you don't want solder spilling out. Uh, when that happens, cleaning it up can be tricky um, because you need to keep the gap. It's, it's kind of like a ridge around the pin um, clean enough so that it goes and clips inside your EC5 housing. Um, I just used a Phillips screwdriver to help me um, force them in and it's really easy. You just place the flat edge of your screwdriver against the pin and you just push it down as hard as you can. Um, so right here I've got the outer, well, what, what I'm going to call essentially the outer lead. Um, so you can see how I'm just going to just plug it in and show how this part now mates with the ESC. Um, so there's the male end and then there's the female end is on, on the right hand side. There we go. It just fits nicely. So I'm going to set up the serial harness. So you can see I'm just making a dummy fit here. Uh, no pins and there we go. So I'm, I've gone for orange. Um, the orange wire simply connects the positive and negative terminals, um, hence creating a serial uh, connection. So again, the same process, cut off the end, tip them, tip, uh, you fill the uh, socket with solder, and it's just, a, it's just a case of repeating the process. Um, you just need to make sure you get your pins right, you, you use the right pins and the right housing, Keep be organized, um, and the more you get used to doing stuff like this, the better your, your solder job will become. Make sure you use a decent quality soldering iron. Um, if it has temperature control, that will help quite a bit um, because this is this is some seriously thick wire and uh, you would need some, some serious temps. Um, some suggest 750 uh, degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, so there we go, we've just got the positive negative terminals connected up and I'm just now setting up the uh, outer loop um, so the pins are in place and now it's just a case of just uh, poking the positive pin into the positive well, slot um, just make sure you get that correct because once it's in it's not coming out and if you do find a way to remove it, you, chances are you'll damage your housing and it'll be a loose fit. Um, and so I'm just going into Superman mode here and you can see how it just takes a couple seconds really. No, I'm kidding. It, it, it took me a while. Um, don't rush your job. Take your time. It's better to do a right job, do a proper job than rushing it. You don't want to have shots. You don't want your light post exploding, essentially. Um, and again, always check the polarity connections on the housing. Well, thanks for watching. Um, do comment on the uh, video and uh, feel free to ask me anything. Thanks again.